welcome, welcome to story time. Welcome, welcome, come right in. Welcome, welcome, welcome to story time. Welcome, welcome, let's begin. Welcome to story time at Auburndale Public Library. I'm Miss Rhonda. I'm Isabella. And it's Christmas time. Yeah. We're still having fun. Very exciting. Santa's coming to town. <laughs> And we have a great story today about gingerbread men. Ooh, my favorite. So we've got a song. Do you know the gingerbread man, the gingerbread man, the gingerbread man? Do you know the gingerbread man who ran and ran and ran? He said, catch me if you can, if you can, if you can. He said, catch me if you can, and ran and ran and ran. I can run like the gingerbread man, the gingerbread man, the gingerbread man. I can run like the gingerbread man. Now catch me if you can. All right. <laughs> well, I don't know if I could catch you, Miss Isabella, but I, I would surely try. Today we have a story that we would like to thank Macmillan Publishers for allowing us to read Tough Cookie, a Christmas story by Edward Hemingway. Mmm, how many like Christmas cookies? Mmm. Once upon a time, while Fox was visiting Christmas Town in the land of holiday treats, a little cookie, still warm from the bakery oven, burst out the front door and shouted, I'm a sweet cookie! Well, hello to you, too. And since you brought it up, you do look sweet. Of course I'm sweet and fast. Run, run, as fast as you can. You can't catch me. I'm the sugar cookie man. Fox never could resist a challenge, so he gave chase, shouting back, You look very sweet, sweet enough to eat. Ha ha, just try and eat me. Run, run, as fast as you can. You can't catch me. I'm the sugar cookie man. Hey, Fox was pretty fast. And he loved sweets. Crunch! But Cookie wasn't sweet at all, and Fox spit him right out. Ugh, you taste awful! What? How dare you? I'm a sugar cookie! I taste wonderful! Sorry to break it to you, my little friend, but you taste terrible. Plus, I think I just broke my tooth. You are one tough cookie. But I'm sweet. Um, no, you're not. But if I'm not a sweet cookie, then what am I? A slow poke who tastes terrible? What do I do now? Oh, he cried. There, there, don't cry. Hmm, maybe we just need to sweeten you up a bit. You think so? It's worth a try. So after a quick trip to the dentist to fix his tooth, Fox took Cookie to the Christmas Town Spa, where the elves dipped him in delicious eggnog, sprinkled him with powdered sugar, and sang him sugary sweet Christmas carols. Fox gave him a lick, Ugh, but Cookie still tasted terrible. Hmm. You said you were a slowpoke. Maybe we should work on your running instead. So Fox signed up Cookie for the Sweet Treat Christmas Town race that very afternoon, and they headed for the park. But Cookie's stubby legs and lack of experience made it impossible for him to keep up with the more seasoned runners. And as hard as he tried, run, run as fast as you can, Cookie. He came in last place. Cookie was exhausted and he didn't feel so tough. Was he cut out for anything? Fox thought so. Every treat in Christmas Town should be able to build itself a proper gingerbread house. You can too. I'll help. Okay. So they found a nice little spot in the gated community of Cookie, cookie Cutter and got to work building and decorating. But when they were finished and Cookie went inside his beautiful new home, crash! It didn't exactly hold up. 
and that's when Cookie crumbled. I'm not sweet. I'm not fast. I can't even make a gingerbread house. Everything I do is half-baked. Don't give up, my little cookie. We'll figure this out. You've just got to hang in there. Why not hang with us? We've been looking forward to meeting you all day, said the ornaments in the tree. Huh? What do you say? It makes perfect sense, seeing as we're Christmas tree ornaments, and you are too. I am? Of course you are, silly. You're not like the other cookies. You're special. Baked with glue and lots of salt. With a little hole in your head for a ribbon. Oh, so that's what that's for. I should have guessed, said Fox. Cookie finally knew what he was made of. And he couldn't have been happier. That afternoon, he hung with care from a branch on the biggest Christmas tree in the center of the park with the sweetest view in town. Look at all those sweets. Overjoyed, Cookie shouted for all the world to hear, Look, look, look at me! You can't reach me! I'm an ornament on a tree! Well, make some room up there for me, Cookie. Fox never could resist a challenge. The end. Oh, what a sweet story. That was very cute, Miss Rhonda. <laughs> nice little cookie ornament. All right, and now we're going to make our own cookies. Mm. You ready, Miss Rhonda? I'm ready. Yum. They are my favorite. We are going to make gingerbread. All right. All right. So first we got our bowl, and we're going to stir a bowl of gingerbread, smooth and spicy brown. Then we're going to roll it with a rolling pin up and down, up and down. Then we're going to take our cookie cutter and make little tiny men. Then we're going to put them in our oven half past ten. When you take them out, mmm, they smell good. Mmm, <laughs> yes. Right. And now for a little Christmas song. Deck the halls with boughs of holly. Fa la 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 la. Tis the season to be jolly. Fa la 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 la. Don we now our gay apparel. Fa la 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 la. Troll the ancient Yuletide carol. Fa la 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 la. See the blazing you'll be for us. Fa la 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 la. Strike the harp and join the chorus. Fa la 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 la. Follow me in merry measure. Fa la 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 la. While I tell of Yuletide treasure. Fa la 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 la. Yay! Beautiful. All right, Miss Rhonda. All right. While she is getting ready, I am going to tell you guys about something great we're doing over here. At Auburndale Library, whenever you come on in, you can write your own letter to Santa. And we're going to send it to him. And right after Christmas, you might get a letter back. So come on in and write one down for him. And we're still doing our story hunt where you take our cards from Auburndale Public Library and you go around to the five areas in Auburndale, write down the secret word, and when you come back in, you can get a prize. And now what we've got next is our story, The Elves and the Shoemaker. All right. There once was a shoemaker who had become so poor that he only had enough leather to make one final pair of shoes. That night, he started to cut out the shoes, then laid down and fell asleep. In the morning, when the shoemaker woke up to start working, he found the pair of shoes standing finished on his table. He was so surprised and couldn't understand what happened. <laughs> he took the shoes in hand and looked at them more closely. They were perfectly sewn and were as good as the work of a master shoemaker. Soon after, a shopper came into the store, and as he was very happy with the shoes, he paid more than the usual price for them, and the shoemaker was able to buy enough leather to make two more pairs. 
He cut them out in the evening, and next day, when he got up for work, the shoes were done. People gave him so much money that he was able to buy more leather to make more pairs. Early in the morning, he found the four pairs finished, and so it went on. When he cut out at evening, was finished in the morning, and soon the shoemaker had made enough money to live comfortably again. Now before Christmas, when he had cut out shoes as usual, he said to his wife, why don't we stay up at night and see who's helping us? The wife agreed, and they hid themselves in the corner of the room behind a clothing rack. At midnight came two little elves who sat down at the shoemaker's table and began to stitch, sew, and hammer so quickly that the shoemaker couldn't believe his eyes. The elves didn't stop till everything was finished. Then they quickly ran away. The next day, the wife said, the elves have helped us a lot. We should knit them scarves and mittens since it's so cold outside and they can stay warm. The husband agreed and the next night when they had everything ready, they laid out the presents on the table and hid themselves to see the elves again. At midnight, the elves came running in ready to work, but were very surprised to see beautiful items on the table. They were so happy with the gift and they put them on right away. Then they hopped and danced around and jumped over chairs and tables and right out the door. The elves never came back again, but the shoemaker had good luck for the rest of his life. And that's our story. <laughs> Those elves sure are helpful. Yes. A lot of magic going on there. Well, that's all we have for today. So it's time to end our day. It's time to end our day. It's time to say a big hooray and then be on our way. It's time to end our day. It's time to end our day. It's time to say a big hooray and then be on our way. Bye.